Welcome to the Getting Started with TypeScript series. My name is Dan Walleen, and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft and really looking forward in this video to walking you through how we can add Webpack into what we did in a previous video. So previously, we looked at how to start from scratch and get TypeScript going, actually compile some code down to JavaScript and then use it. Well, normally once TypeScript runs and you get a lot of these JavaScript files, you want to bundle those. So to start things off, we're going to talk about using something called Webpack to add this bundling functionality and some other functionality into a TypeScript project. So if you go to webpack.js.org, you'll see that Webpack's all about this bundling technology. You can bundle your scripts, you can bundle styles, there's all kinds of things you can do with it. And while I'm not going to dive deep into how Webpack works, for now you just need to know that we could take multiple files and generate some static assets that can be run in the browser. And that's really what Webpack's all about. Now it can also do some other things. Uh, for instance, I'm gonna use it for a development web server. So in the last video, we used HTTP server, which also works, but Webpack has a server you can use built in. It makes it really easy to get started. So let me go ahead and jump on over and show you a project that now has this built in. So if we go to the repository, and I'll give you a link to this at the end of the video as well, we'll have a new folder called Adding Webpack to a TypeScript Project. Now, earlier I showed how we can just add TypeScript and TypeScript alone into a project and then configure a little build script here. So now we can do npm run tsc. That would then take our TypeScript and generate our JavaScript files. Okay, that's pretty cool, but that's really only halfway there. Normally we want to take it up a notch and we want to be able to bundle, as I mentioned. So if I open this package JSON, you're going to notice that there is some Webpack packages in here, like Webpack CLI. And you'll notice I have some commands up here. Now this Webpack command, which you can run with npm run Webpack, I'll do this in a moment, this is actually going to do a development build of bundles, one bundle in this case. Or if I want to watch for changes to files, if I want to do live development, and then every time I save, it automatically regenerates the bundles, I could do webpack development, and then notice this dash dash watch. That'll watch for changes, kind of like the TSC dash dash watch that I showed earlier in a previous video. And then if we run npm start, you'll notice it'll run webpack serve, and this is a little development server, development purposes only, you wouldn't use this for production. But what it will do is it's going to open it in a development build and then open up the browser automatically. Now to do that, you'll notice that I have this HTML Webpack plugin, TS loader, of course TypeScript, and then the Webpack CLI and Webpack dev server. Now the reason I mentioned these other packages here is because what Webpack will do is it can automate the TypeScript build process, but then take it up a notch. Instead of just outputting the files, which it could do, it can actually output the files, but then convert them into a bundle. Uh, if I go into the dist folder right now, you're gonna notice I have a bundle right here. I'll show you how we get that. Now, in order for this to work, I had to add those packages, and then I also had to add this webpack config. Now, I'm only gonna go through this really quickly. Um, this isn't something you need to memorize, and this is something that Normally, you could just find a working example and go with it, maybe tweak it a little bit. That's how most of us do it. Um, but a couple things I want to point out. Number one, the entry in this case is going to be main.ts. Now, if you recall in the previous video, we had a main.ts. However, I've changed things up a little bit. In this main.ts, what I'm going to do is import the add function. Okay, and that add function is here. This is the function we saw in the previous video. I'm going to export that as what's called a default export. This is just JavaScript functionality, not TypeScript at this point. And what I'm going to do then is use that add function right there, just like we did earlier, get the result, and then I'm going to go find uh, some functionality in the DOM, in this case a span called with an ID of output. If I find that, then I'm going to go ahead and update the result. We're going to convert the number to a string. Now I want to show you real quick though, I'm in TypeScript. Watch what happens if I just put result here. Now, if we mouse over add, look what the return type is. It's a number. Okay, so result is actually, it'd be like doing this. Number. Very similar to what you saw me do in the previous video where we can add a number data type. 
Now we don't need to do that though in TypeScript because it has something called type inference. It'll infer that this returns a number, therefore this constant will just be a number. It'll do that for us. Now, likewise, if I mouse over query selector here, notice it returns an element or null. That's what the pipe is, or. So notice if I mouse over output, it's an element or null. Okay, so it figures that out. I'm gonna say, all right, if it's not null, then let's go ahead and update the inner HTML. But notice if I mouse over this, type number is not assignable to type string. Now there's a couple ways I could deal with this, but one way is we could take that number and say to string. And that'll convert it from a number to a string, of course. Very similar to JavaScript there. Now the reason I wanted to point that out, that has nothing to do with Webpack, that's just TypeScript, is this is the guardrails I've been talking about over the last few videos. Now, if I do things I shouldn't be doing or do something that might be dangerous at runtime, then this will actually catch it. Um, really, really nice. I like having the guardrails because, again, I like having this input as I'm coding. And that's really the big attraction to TypeScript. And there's a lot more that we'll cover about this. Okay, now that is my main entry point. When Webpack goes to do its bundling, it know, needs to know where to start. What's the first script? where it should start at, and I'm telling it. Go into source, go to main.ts, that's your starting point. It's gonna jump here. It's then gonna see this and go, oh, okay, I need to go grab that script, compile it, and then bundle it in with this script. And that's where we'll get this one bundle in this example. I also am supporting, do you wanna have debugging capabilities? Recall that in TypeScript, you can add this source map true well, this is kind of the equivalent for Webpack inline source map. That's my dev tool. Now, this right here is the magic for TypeScript. What this is going to do is find all TypeScript files. This is a regular expression right here. And it's going to use that TS loader that I showed you back in package.json, this guy right here. And it's going to use that to actually convert my TypeScript into JavaScript. Now, how does it know which version of JavaScript? Well, that's where it goes into the TS config, and I kept it at a target of ES2017 like we did in the last video. All right, so that's what this does. This is actually kind of taking the role of TSC and doing that for us. Now it's gonna be looking for TS and JS files. Now it's gonna take the output of all the files I have and put them into this one bundle. Now, if I had like 50 or 100 or more files, that bundle might get really big and you might actually have multiple bundles. That's possible to do, but beyond the scope of what we're gonna cover. Now, this is gonna uh, do something kind of interesting. Notice I have an index HTML, but there's no JavaScript here. Now, give me a second. I'm gonna show you that Webpack will use this as a template. The reason it's gonna do that is I told it to. And then it's gonna inject a script tag into the bottom of the body. All right, so it's basically going to copy this file into the dist folder and then add a script tag to the bundle that will show up right here in our dist folder. Kind of magical there. And then I've also configured a web development server. It's going to load on port 9000. So let's, uh, now that we've kind of walked through this a little bit, let's wrap up by running this. So I'm going to come into the root of this folder. And let's first come on in and run this web pack. Now, let me actually delete the dist. Let's blow that away. And now we're going to do npm run webpack. Hit enter. And notice that it's actually doing the build. And now our dist folder came up. There's the bundle. You'll see a whole bunch of code in here it adds. And then look at the index HTML. See how it added the script tag right here? Okay, well, it copied my template into the dist folder. And then it generated this bundle and added a link to it for me. How cool is that? Now what we can do is either deploy that to production if this was our app, which this is a very simple app right now, or I could even do this. I could say colon W, and this is the watch that you saw in package.json right here. And this will do a build, but then it will watch for changes. So now if I go into my add TS or my main TS, it'll automatically kind of rebuild. So just to show you, I can just put a space even. Give it a second, and there we go. Now I'm gonna take the space back out, and there we go, it just built again. So that's super useful if you're doing live development. But when you're running live, oftentimes you wanna see your web page, right? 
So that's where this npm start comes in, webpack serve. So I'm gonna go ahead and run npm start, and what this is gonna do, in fact, let me delete the dist again, is this will not create a dist. This will actually do everything in memory, but it'll actually launch the browser and launch the app. So it'll do the bundling, but you'll never see it. It's just for development purposes and only in memory. Very useful though. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's come back to here actually and hit start. There we go. And there's our app. Nothing real fancy, but you'll notice that if I go to sources, I can type main, we can debug just like we saw before. So I can set breakpoints and do all that uh, fun type of stuff here if I want to. All right, so that is an example of how we can now add Webpack into a TypeScript project. And just as a review, the main things we did were we got the packages in place. And then I always think the hardest part is getting this Webpack config correct. Now this is a real simple example. You can find many examples out there if you just do a quick search. But if you go to the project, you'll be able to run this one if you'd like. Let me pop up a link for you, though, uh, to wrap up here where you can get to this. Okay, so if you go to github.com slash getting started with TypeScript, you see right here, that'll get you to the project. Then just follow the instructions in the readme. All right, there's a readme at the root, which will say open the folder you want to use, and then just follow those instructions. Really, all you're going to do is an npm install and an npm start in the case of this Webpack example. All right, so now we've kind of wrapped up covering how to get started from scratch with TypeScript. Now we just covered how to add Webpack into a TypeScript project. From here on out, we're going to start diving into some of the TypeScript features. So go ahead and hit like and subscribe so you know when the new videos come out, and we'll see you in the next video.